There's the Ducati. All right, all right. Let's go load this bad boy up in the back of the truck. straps undone bar the neighbor's ramp and to be safe got the strap holding it against the hitch so that way it won't fall and fall away from the bed and the bike won't fall again <laughs> from DIY Semi Pro. So, what you see here is a Ducati Scrambler Desert Sled. Now, it doesn't have a DS anywhere, but if you're familiar with the Ducatis, this is what the trim looks like. The blue and gold wheels, right? That's kind of the main uh, attractor, if you will. Now, it's a 2022 with 1,042 miles on it. I'm showing you the bad side. I bought it from Copart my first ever live vehicle auction purchase. Uh, I literally just picked it up yesterday uh, and I got it the day before. So I don't know exactly when this video is Earth. coming out, but uh, you have three days, about three business days, I believe it is, from what, the time you win, which the winning day counts as a business day. So if you win on a Thursday, you gotta pick it up by Monday. And uh, it was put into the back of my dually with a giant, huge freaking forked caterpillar and they just put it on straps lifted it up put it in the back of the truck and i strapped it down and here we are with the help of my wife and my neighbors thank you guys and so what i want to do right now is i want to take you guys through a little tour of the damages that i see that i think i see because you and i if you're interested in either a just watching this whole process or b doing something like this yourself you'll be able to see um, I guess A, I'll tell you my experience, a little background on that. You'll be able to see some of the tools I have and uh, obviously cost. The cost is a huge consideration. And so I won't make this video too long, I won't belabor it with a bunch of like, just me speaking like I do on some of my other videos. I'm trying to learn. Um, but basically, I just wanna give you a high level, like this is what we got, here's what we see, and then I'll post it and I'll ask you guys kind of what you think, uh, what I should do with it. Ultimately, the wife says I could do whatever I want as long as I have money to buy the kids Christmas presents and warm clothes here in Idaho for the winter. Okay, cool. Well, I I would like to keep the bike. I don't know if I'm 
if I'm gonna keep the bike. Uh, I have a lot of other toys and it's just more stuff in the garage and I'd rather try to make some money off of it. So the whole goal of this entire build, if you will, is to A, save as much money as possible, make as much money as possible, and see if I can sell it within, let's say it's, uh, it's November 12th right now, Saturday, November 12th. Yesterday was Veterans Day, and the day before was the Marine Corps birthday, so December Fidelis, happy uh, Marine Corps birthday to all you double dogs out there. So anyway, my whole goal is within maybe, let's say April. I'm hoping to have this thing sold by April with the objective of at least making two grand off of it, at least. And so that's the key part, right? What did I pay for it? So I actually got it for $3,900. My, my max was 5,000. I think I got lucky with that. But then I got hit with fees that I was reading the website and I wasn't really sure exactly which ones applied to me, but I found out. I, found out. I had to pay a $800 fee to Copart, that's their profit, a part of their profit, like a $79 uh, load unload fee, another $89 admin fee, and then my taxes. I ended up paying uh, $5,100 and some change out the door for this bad boy. They go for brand new, like $12,395 or something like that, $13,395, so yeah, I guess it depends on where you buy it from. But again, out the door, brand new with you know their delivery fees, their PDI, um, your taxes, whatever, you know, you're probably gonna spend, I'm gonna guess, between 14 and 15 grand for a brand new bike. So the intent is to make this bike look brand new, i.e. I replace everything that I cannot fix. Um, it, there's things that I can fix that, you know, aesthetically you want it to look brand new, right? So the aluminum over here, where the, where the peg's at, I don't know if you can see it. <sighs> I wanna be able to try and take the grinder and grind this off and then maybe I'll just take a parts bin of items to get powder coated. So in theory, it looks brand new, right? Instead of buying a whole new piece, if it makes sense to do that. Uh, so that's the whole goal, it's a budget build. And I'll take you guys on the journey to figure out how this whole process works because it's honestly the, the first time I've ever, ever done it. And I, I have no idea how long it's gonna take, how much it's gonna cost, especially during COVID inflation, thanks Biden. Um, you know, it's 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 gonna be interesting to say the least. Now, I would only recommend doing this obviously if A, you have the space, uh, B, you have the time, and C, you have the cash in no particular order because uh, that's really what it is. It's winter over here for me. So I'm gonna sit on it in the garage, I've got some space, and we're just gonna tinker on it, see what we can do. And then you guys will at least have uh, one, I mean, there's lots of other videos out there, but at least for a motorcycle, not specifically a Ducati, but something that looks like the guy probably dropped it and it slid, it did a bounce, like it, it broke the mirror and it has rash on the right hand handlebar and the left. I don't know, I don't know exactly what happened um, because there is some road rash on the right side here and the left side and I, the left side's worse. So like forensically thinking, you know, it could have been, he, he, he fell down, he hit something, combination thereof, and it, it was on the right side and it did a hop. It like, you know, it like basically went right and then grabbed and then like flipped and went on the left side or vice versa. It could have been left side first because this is where most of the damage is. And it actually looks like, uh, it was like uh, peeling this way, like the bike, if you will, was going like this onto the asphalt. And, uh, but it's really just like, there's no, there's no damage to the foot pegs on the right side. I'll, br I'll bring you guys around. Let's, let's do a walk around real quick. I know I was gonna, I was gonna keep this video pretty short, but I think it's important to, to A, understand my goals with this and B, the damage, right? And then that way you guys can figure out, A, if you think uh, you wanna even watch this series. Um, see if it's something that's within your capabilities and uh, we'll go from there, right? So uh, once we do the walk around, I'll edit the video and post it up. And then as I go along with, I think it's gonna be disassembling everything next, having my, my parts list of what I need to repair or buy. And then it's going to be the third video is getting those parts in, uh, fixing the parts that I thought I could repair. And then the fourth video will probably be putting them back together. I'll do a bunch of time lapse and stuff so you guys don't have to sit and watch me do everything, right? Because either you have the experience 
or you have the confidence that you can do it because you have the tools and you're gonna go for it, right? Um, I think you'll hang around and you'll watch at that point, but I don't need to sit and like tell you, put this part here, put that part there. That's not what this is about. This is not a tutorial educational, like how you fix it. This is just, do you wanna embark on, a, on an adventure like this and try to make money in the end? So with that said, let's go ahead and we'll walk around. I'll try and note everything that I see. And then A, or I'm gonna go just with like E, cause I don't even know how many of the alphabets I use already. For the person that may potentially want to buy this bike, um, they can, I mean, full transparency here, right? I think that's the thing. If you have a, it's a salvage title. So if you're gonna sell to somebody, I thought about buying salvage title vehicles before, but I didn't, I was reluctant because I could not get enough evidence to support me in my thinking that it was done, it was repaired properly, correctly. So I wanna be transparent for whoever it is that may want to buy this bike. Cause I think it's, once I fix it and wash it, honestly, I mean, the wife says I'm not gonna sell it. So uh, we'll see how that goes. I really, if, if, I, if I like it, maybe I won't sell it. But at the same time, if I'll, I'll post it up for sale and if someone wants to pay what I think it's worth, given everything that's been fixed and that it's roadworthy and runs fine, uh, then, you know, hey, here's all the videos and here's to you, guy or girl, that may potentially want to buy this bike. You can watch all these videos and you can see the quality work that was done to it. I mean, honestly, if the brakes actually worked right now, I'd go ride this thing. Like, it's not in a condition that it's not roadworthy. It's just that the front brakes doesn't work because the master cylinder was exposed. It was it slid on it. So, like, from me to you, like, for sure, this thing, as long as it meets your expectations, it's got the parts, everything's repaired, by all means, go for it. I hope you like it. And uh, if, if we can uh, come to uh, an agreement on price, then great. And I've obviously already kind of mentioned how much I want to get for it. So um, maybe I should edit that part out and like jack it up a little bit. All right, so here we go. Let me get the phone and we'll take it to her. All right, so from the front here, the handlebars aren't straight. And the bike's, I think, leaning to the left a little bit because of the way the undercarriage is. When it's on my uh, it's on my stand, the exhaust actually is it protrudes down below the left side of the bike, so it's going to be canted to the left a little bit. So that doesn't have anything to do with the dam or the accident, if you will. Um, but coming up from the front here, the bars, the forks, everything looks. Uh, I mean, if you're looking at it slightly to the right, uh, as you guys are viewing it to your right, then it's leaning to the left. If you're sitting on it, uh, you can obviously see the front end here got jacked up. So I'm gonna have to order a new blue one. I don't know if I can sand this down. I've seen some videos where you can sand plastic and then hit it with a torch and it kind of resets it. But um, the bracket just might be a little bit bent. So I'll take that off, I'll put it on the ground on a, on a piece of wood, a square piece of wood, see if it's all um, level. And if not, I'll, I'll try and bend it in the vise to make sure it's flat. This thing might've just, I don't know, like you buy a new one and it might just mount right up and it might look perfect. Um, the ring, needs to be ground and uh, I'll get this thing blasted and repowder coated. Uh, let's see what else is over here. Oh yeah, there's red tape wherever there's some damage. So the plastic got messed up. I don't even know if I can fix this and get a new sticker or not, or I might have to buy a new one of these. The left side looks fine. The rim and tire look really good. The forks look good. There's no damage that I can see up there. Um, this is my first really analysis investigation on this thing because I haven't, I, I looked at it outside at the, at the lot, but it was just cold out and whatnot. And it's kind of a bear. So I didn't really sit and check everything out if you will. But, uh, obviously headlight bezel, the lights, everything works Elect electronically. Everything works minus the ABS system. The lights work high beam pass, uh, passing flicker switch. All that works. You can see the headlight here is off and I, this this whole area, the windscreen and the headlight is not lined up because you can see there's a flange. You can't even see, can you? Let's bring this, or a bracket. This bracket, oh, my lights went out. Well, maybe you guys can see. This bracket right here, this is, uh, this is meant, this is bent. And uh, so I'll have to take that off, see if I can hammer it. If not, I might just buy a new one because it'd probably save me time. Time is money. And so, Let's see, the, I don't know about this. Once I take things off, I'll have a better understanding of, I mean, obviously the lens is jack. So unless I can get a lens by itself, I have to order the whole assembly, excuse me, assembly. And this one's fine right here. This one's good. So I'll remove the windscreen, check all this out right here. 
and see what needs to be repaired. And then up here, here is the clutch cylinder. And you can see how that, that just got ground up. I mean, that's getting replaced. Uh, the, yeah, this thing, let's see. That's getting replaced. I mean, this is, whole, this is one assembly right here. Uh, the lever's getting replaced. The, the mirror assembly, I don't know if I can order just this, if I can actually grind this down and then get it powder coated, make it look real nice again, maybe. Uh, again, time versus, you know, how much time does it take me to fix everything and then take it down to get powder coated versus just buying it? If it's dollars, you know, comparison, I'll probably just buy a new one because it'll save me time. And powder coating, I don't know how much all that's gonna cost yet. But biggest thing is I think these bars are gonna have to get replaced because I don't know if I can, I don't know if it'll be worth, I don't even know if I can get this thing out exactly with a puller, with like a freaking pipe puller or not. Um, we'll see. But uh, this assembly, unless I can replace just the button, if I can replace the button, take this apart, then that'll be cool because that got ground off right here for your passing, passing thingamajigger. And what else is in here? What's good here? Uh, what did they say? They got, oh, they got, a red sticker there, but I don't know why. So they put stickers, I'm, I feel like they put stickers in places for like liability to make sure that like someone can't say, I, I think they say as is, but to make sure that um, they just err on the side of caution. And so I, the only thing that I really see right here is, let's see, what is that? I can't tell if you guys can see that right there. Not, uh, Maybe something. And then right here, right here, the paint is missing, but it's really weird because, I'll buff that out probably. I can't see anything, is it this? The fork right here maybe? It's like barely anything though. So don't really know. It could have been other debris on the highway when he fell or hit something that, you know, something else hit this bike. I mean, obviously this handlebar's down. Um, like that, so here's here's a good look. You can see right here, right? Like, right here, this is the contact. This is the actual guard. Well, it's plastic, so it's not really a guard, but there's already a stop within the column itself. But, so nothing hit here, right, that I can tell. So I think something else might have hit it, or maybe it was even a just factory defect when I was sitting out in the yard, someone did something and peeled it and then just started to rust, right? But, um, yeah, like this thing feels good. So, I don't know, it's really weird. Um, so onto the side. So here we go, here's the side piece. I believe these pop off. I'm gonna have to look at a parts list, a diagram and see if that just pops off and I can order a new one. And I'll get some touch up paint and I'll probably, I'll get some, some micro sandpaper, clean it up, put some touch up paint and then I'll wet sand it and then I'll buff it and that'll look brand new, honestly. So other than that, up on the top, there's really nothing coming down over here. Everything looked great. The peg was sacrificed. Uh, I'm guessing this was probably part of it. And maybe that's red tape. I don't know if that's from them. Yeah, it looks all kind of similar. And then the rear passenger peg was sacrificed as well. And then you've got, of course, the seat pad. And there really, I don't think is anything else back here. Plastic's good. Nothing down here, axle. What I'll probably end up doing, so that took a little bit of it. I'll probably end up taking the nut off. Um, make sure that, you know, it'll, it'll kind of clean the threads up as you take it off. And I'll take a little small file to it, clean it up. But honestly, that doesn't look bad at all. Uh, let's see over here. Over here's the right side. Again, so there's a little bit of damage, which I couldn't figure out how they, and they put stickers on this stuff, but like, honestly, this almost looks like, this is like the dude has, you know, just from riding like dirt and it's like brushed aluminum. So I don't even think that's damage. Honestly, that sticker's probably just null and void. Um, yeah, so this looks like his boots right here. No damage to the frame, maybe a boot or something. Cause if you have your foot up here, I don't know. I haven't sat on it to really feel where his boot position would be, but there is no damage like anywhere else over here that I can see, nothing on the exhaust pipe. So like they put they put a sticker here, but look, it's just a little like dirt scratch. It's not even an accident scratch that I can tell. Peg is fine here. 
No damage. Same here, nothing. To flush the fluid out of that bad boy. But yeah, like, uh, look at this guy. I mean, this was cracked. I wonder if there's no other... I roasted the sticker. I should have took that off. I'll have to try and see if I can get it off without changing the color of the exhaust. Um, but I'm wondering if either his boot or something hit here. Maybe that's what initiated the fall, actually. Because um, that's bent up. Unless it... Because there's, there's no damage anywhere on the bike. And the fact that... The fact that you have something right here and something right here, it it's like, what... Was that like a tire? I don't even know. Like maybe he had a tire. And then, I mean, even the light assembly, nothing got damaged here. It's really kind of hard to figure out. You know, maybe that was from, maybe, you know, he had a tire or road debris and it, that's kind of what initiated. Cause that, that could be like a rubber. I don't know. Yeah, again, it, it's interesting to know, or it would be interesting to know what happened to this thing. Um, and uh, over here, there's nothing else. You guys can see. They put a sticker here, but that's, I can't tell if that's part of the accident, maybe? I have to wash it, really. I think that's part of it, too, is just washing it down to see uh, what else you can see once the dirt is gone. Um, but over here, handlebar, end, that's done, that's toast. And I think I'll probably have to replace the whole handlebar itself. But other than that, yeah, like this thing is not that bad. So that will be that will be interesting to see. You know, once I take off some of these brackets and things, can I see any other damage? And my thing is, of course, I will try and fix everything that I can that I think is obviously primarily a mechanical safety issue, which I, I don't besides the ABS, that's it. There's nothing else right now that would be a safety issue. So once we replace the uh, master cylinder, um, we'll end up, uh, we'll end up, wait, don't, yeah, this thing is, uh, I'm not sure. Oh, it's the line, so see the line? So the master cylinder itself is fine. I probably can order, I probably can order, let's see, maybe I'll just clean up the tip, I'll grind it down, make it really nice, I'll get this powder coated, because this is actually good. I'll try and get a new cover for this. And then uh, I have to get a new brake line because that is what, uh, look at that yumminess right there. Can I focus on it? Focus, focus maybe right there. Okay. Too close, I don't know. That and then um, what else do we got over here? This is the throttle, throttle works fine. Although the line is kind of chewed up right here. So I guess I'm probably gonna have to get a new throttle line which uh, that'll be interesting. That wouldn't be too hard, I don't think, to fix unless it goes deep down into the catacombs of the body, <laughs> which, let's see, goes down here somewhere. Yeah, it goes down here. I might have to take the tank off and, uh, and then snake in a new line, and, and that's how I'll fix that one. But other than that, guys, like I think this is really a... It's going to be a good bike for me to... Uh, let me turn this camera around. Good bike for me to to just learn the process and, you know, figure out like, I think I probably have to do at least two or, two or three all together to say, okay, on any given day, this is how much, you know, and I'll, I'll apply percentages to it. Like MSRP taxes in my state, here's all the fees that I would normally pay a brand new bike. And then, you know, here's how much I get it for. Here's all the stuff that I spent uh, or the parts that I had to buy and here's how much it cost and then figure out okay if i sell it i made x percent and you know here's my here's my buffer and then do another one right and then same thing and then if i get two or three of those i can say on average i will make you know between i'm gonna say seven and 18 percent profit against what someone would buy for a brand new bike now that's the other part is who's going to want to buy a bike like this well hopefully if you're watching this video it's you because you're going to see uh how i am i mean this is this is like this is my life. I love working on things, fixing things. I got my car lift over there. Boop, boop. And, uh, you know, so can you guys see me? Is this on? Oh, there we go. That's, that's much better. My car lifts way over there, but I, I like fixing things. Uh, I, I want to make things right. I want them to look nice. Cause I got OCD. So 
if you end up being interested in this bike, uh, I hope you enjoy this series. And even if you don't want to buy this bike, I hope you enjoy this series. If you're interested in buying a bike or some other vehicle like this and going down that same road that I'm going down, just trying to get a baseline to understand if it's something you want to do. Maybe you live in a state that you have winters that you really can't do much outside. Well, you got a garage. I got a heater in my garage, so that kind of helps me out. I'll be out here working nights, weekends, no problem. Um, Maybe just you're single, you ain't got no wife or kids, you just got a dog, he likes to hang out with you and you wanna take on a project like this, right? There's a lot of different types of people out there, different types of uh, vehicles you may be interested in. And uh, there is boats, there is trailers. Again, the whole goal is if I don't keep it, how much of a profit can I make? So I know this video is kind of long. I'll try and edit it to make it a little bit shorter. Um, but I think it's important that you, you the first video obviously is very detailed and hopefully I explained everything, I hit all the widgets so you know like why I got this and my intent and you can see the damage and, and really if you see something that I missed, let me know in the comments because it'll probably take me a couple weeks to really take it apart and see what I can fix and put that aside for powder coating versus what I need to buy. So I got some time and um, and we can hopefully go through this together and then again next that next video will be the parts removal process which i'll just do a time lapse because again nobody cares about unless it's something that's like maybe not just normal hardware on the outside like that fuel tank okay well drain the tank where's all the lines at and then maybe you guys want to see that one if i got any tips or tricks on how to drain a gas tank and remove it that you don't know about like there's lots of other videos on youtube right like i'm not i'm not the guru um taking Ducatis apart, never done it before, taking lots of stuff apart, putting it back together is the fun part, not having extra pieces left over. <laughs> so I'm gonna bag and tag everything this time because I've learned my lesson on this great earth for 41 years that when you think you're gonna remember five weeks from now where that one bolt or spring or clip went, it's not gonna happen, not gonna happen. Life gets in the way and you forget. Unless you're Doogie Hauser, but I'm not. So with that said, uh, thanks for watching this long video and I hope you guys enjoy the mini series on trying to make a profit on a Ducati Scrambler from Copart. I'm Kyle. Talk to you guys later.